We're going to be breaking down some people that have that courage, that have sent me their recordings. Right? I made a call out. I made, I made a, um, a, a challenge on Wholesale Hotline a couple Mondays ago. And the challenge was to send me the recordings and I'm going to critique them. So I've got a couple here that we are going to break down. And, and there's some phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal action here. All right? Really, really, really good skills. We're going to polish them up a little bit so that they're more effective. All right? And I am absolutely thrilled that I've got with me my man, my brother, Rafael Cortez with us today. All right. This guy right here for, I mean, how many deals, Rafael, in your I, life? I mean, yeah, close to the thousand number. I mean, I know I've been in over 1,400 appointments, uh -huh. um, you know, that sort of thing. What was your, what did, what did you do before branching out on your own? Uh, acquisitions. That yep. was my thing. Yep. You know, talking to people, negotiating, figuring out where the, the problems were and breaking all those down. So, yeah. I love I'm it. Excited. I want to, I want to hear what we have on those calls, man. It, yeah. It's, it's always interesting. What you do make, you think about talking to a thousand people well, before hiring someone? At the, at the very least, yep. I mean, it does, people want to hire too soon. I think people want to plug into um, uh, other people into uh, those places where they're afraid mm -hmm. of performing. Um, nobody likes rejection, right? We all know that. Uh, but what it does is it's going to set you up to understand what kind of questions to ask. It's going to build that backbone that we need. You're going to learn to uh, understand. And when the time comes, mm -hmm. when the time comes that you need to actually come in and negotiate a deal, you're going to be ready for it. You're yep. not going to get blindsided by, you know, dropping, you know, offers or, you know, rebuttals and rejections because you, you got the practice. So, yeah, That's it. At least a thousand. So, That's it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So let's get into this. Let's break this down, guys. Welcome. This is uh, Real Estate Investing Live with Brent Daniels, with me, Mr. TTP, Mr. Talk to People. And I'm excited because this really gets me excited. Breaking down, seeing people in action, going out there, having real conversations. It's absolutely exceptional. So let's start with Ray here. Ray is does a fantastic job. We're going to clean up a little bit. Check this out. Hello, Erwin. Yes. Hey, Erwin, this is Ray. I was giving you a call in regards to your property at Barry Road. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. The reason for our call is because we're actually looking to buy in the area. I just wanted to give you a quick call and see if you might be open to a cash offer. What's your offer? Boom. Right off the bat. Listen, when you ask somebody if they would consider an offer on their property, there's only six responses. And you're going to get this more and more and more. What's your offer? How much will you give me? How much will you give me? Ray does a phenomenal job here, uh, like really adjusting to this. He obviously has a lot of experience. He's talking to a lot of people and he really flows well. Now, did you see how he went with his first name? He asked for the first name. Sounds like in a neighbor because he lives down the street from this guy. You know what I mean? Like the, these are our community. These are our neighbors. Even if you're doing this virtually, you're working in that community. So reach out to these people as they are your neighbors because they are your neighbors. Phenomenal. I love it. Yes, sir. In order for us to generate an offer for you, we'll have to ask you a few questions. Uh, do you have a minute or two? Sure. Great. Can you tell me a little bit about the property there? Uh, is the property vacant or do you have tenants? See, I don't like this question. All right. So Ray's getting a little bit of nervous energy here, I think. He responded, well, listen, I just need to find out a little bit about the property so that I can get you a solid offer. That's very reasonable. That sits well with the property owners, right? That's going to sit in their mind. They're going to be like, okay, that's okay. Uh, you know, if they're interested, if not, they'll hang up or they'll, get, they'll just be like, no, give me an offer, whatever. And then you move on. Right. But this, the, the, there's a little crack. There's a little crack in this in, in the door here. So it, he's he's kind of getting in there, and then he goes, "Is the property vacant, or is it tenant occupied?" And doing all the don't get into that. That's like you're we're 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 thirty seconds into a conversation with a stranger, and you're telling them, you know, who lives at the property. Don't go there. Don't go there. Ask about the condition of the property first. All right, to get you an accurate offer, the condition of the property is really important. Can you tell me what remodeling have you done to the kitchen and bathrooms in the last five years? Right now, nervous energy gets us to just kind of throw out things. The most common thing that I see people throw out, Raphael, is uh, how long have you owned the property? Right? Does it matter? And no, it doesn't. And then uh, it's too early to get into anything in terms of equity, in terms of, uh, I think the key thing to look for is open-ended questions. Yes. Uh, one thing that I love dropping right at the beginning of the conversation mm -hmm. is, can you tell me a little bit more about, you know, the property and, and why you're looking to sell? Yeah. And, and that just opens it up for condition. It opens it up for situational awareness and, and you know, seller conversation altogether. Love it. No, I live in it. Okay, great. See how he responded? 
See how he responds? I live in it. You know what I mean? Like, why are you asking that? I live here, right? It, it, already a little friction. You feel that? You feel, oh, it feels a little like a little friction already coming through his tone. We need to soften it up. We need to open it up. We need to get this guy talking. Can you tell me a little bit about the condition of the property there, sir? Uh, when was the last time you guys did any renovations to the property? Um, when, right? When, what, how, why, all these open-ended questions. That was fantastic. He should have opened up with that, and it would have caused that friction in the beginning. It would have been way smoother, right? It would have just gone a lot smoother. You know, the house, is, the roof is 15 years old. Uh, a year ago, I had the house replumbed. Do you see what's happening here? Do you see why I harp? And I just stand on top of a mountain and I scream, do the four pillars of prequel and start with the condition of the property. He was giving one word answers up until now. You asked him about the condition of the property. The conversation blossoms. There's a new hot water heater. Uh, the air conditioner is about seven years old. Okay. Um, you know, the inside of the house could be spruced up. I mean, it's... We, we, we did some work when we moved in here 29 years ago and other than a little painting and we put some laminate floors down and great he's just going off he's just listening you know what it could be spruced up that's a nice word for saying it needs to be renovated right I mean, that's him saying, you know, it's it's in original condition. We bought it 29 years ago, you know, and it, we haven't done much to it. We did a little bit, but we haven't done much. This is fantastic, but we got to see what's going on here. Why, why would he consider selling there? Is there any motivation? Does he have to move? Is there a timeline? I'm going to show you where to put in the question about timeline. I'm telling you, if you use these techniques that I'm critiquing right here, that I'm giving you right here, you are going to be way more effective. But Ray, listen, if you're watching this, fantastic. I love your tone. I love the way that you're going. You have good energizing enthusiasm. It sounds like you're engaged. You're very attentive to them. You know what I mean? You're not just kind of you know throwing things out. You're not peppering them with a bazillion questions that I see a lot of VAs do. It feels more of an interrogation than it does a conversation. So you're doing a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal job. There you go, Ray, there you go. Fantastic, Ray. I mean, honestly, I love you. You have so many skills. Just clean up a little bit in the beginning here, and I'm telling you, it's going to just, it's going to be the difference, you know, multiple six figures. And most of the upstairs by now, uh, we have the, the, the steps left to do, but other than that, it's all, um, but, you know, it's not as built, uh, but the last major, major upgrade was probably 20 years ago. The major upgrade. And would you say uh, any upgrades in the kitchens or bathrooms, or would you say that would need an upgrade or a remodel? Oh, no. Uh, the, the kitchen cabinets we were... See when you ask specific questions? Ray! Come on, man. I love it. Specific questions, kitchen and bathrooms. And then all of a sudden he's going to get into the cabinets. He's going to get into all these things. That's phenomenal. That's what you want to do. You don't want to sound like you, you're not invested in this conversation. You really want to know so that you can get them an offer. We need to know these things. This helps us make the decisions. This helps us make go, go to that breakdown of fix-up estimates and, and look at how much this is going to cost to to fix up so that we know what we can offer them. They replaced when we moved in. Uh, they're dated. Uh, they're, they're not terrible, but, uh, you know, it's dated, and they've, they've got almost 30 years of wear on them. So um, the bathrooms have new toilets and new sinks. Um, the master bathroom upstairs the the tub was removed and it's a walk-in shower all right now after he's going through all these conditions ray this is the time this is when you go in and say okay just to let you know tell them all the benefits right because what happens here and i'm just future pacing this call because i've listened to it a few times um he's going to go into well how much do you want for it and this guy's going to hit him with the rebuttal you called me and that's very typical if you go in and you say listen this is how we purchase properties it's cash it's completely as is you don't have to put another cent in the property you don't have to pay a real estate agent you know for something like that just a net clean offer to you you know do you have a price in mind that you would consider right that's a lot different than how much do you want for it right so watch this 
Um, the the other full bathroom upstairs has a new tile and a new tub and a new fixture, new toilet. Okay. So one is a walking shower. Uh, the other one is uh, is a tub. With a tub, and then there's a half a bath downstairs. Okay, so two baths and a half. Um, well, sounds uh, sounds great. I mean, you, it, it seems nervous energy, Ray. Right? I mean, it sounds great, right? Yeah, there's there's a little bit the tonality changed a little bit on his side because he's he's thinking about that price point. He's mm -hmm. thinking about dropping that low anchor. Right. And if you if you do that too uh, too early in the call, like mm -hmm. you you can you can actually lose a rapport. Right. Um, I want to throw out a couple of things that I noticed too on that call. Yep. Uh, he's doing a really really Ray, you're doing a great job about keeping that seventy to thirty uh, percent conversation ratio. So the seller is speaking seventy percent of the time, if not seventy five or you know or somewhere around there, and then you're keeping it to that thirty percent, which is huge right if you're doing most of the talking uh, while you're talking to a seller you're not discovering yep. you're not finding out new information you're doing a great great job at that um, another thing to uh, to kind of keep in mind is uh, reading between the lines now you look at the way the seller is communicating with you uh, and then we go back to those behaviors right like my that's my jam uh, you start to understand okay this uh, this person is you know has a, a steady tonality he's more on the analytical side yep. and and you understand how to communicate with them when you start to mirror that conversation so Love Ray it. I mean I mean, to this point, it's, it's really good up until the point where the energy uh, just kind of switched because he's thinking about dropping that anchor. Well, what we do is we're thinking ahead. And if you, it, it, Ray, if you transition right now into giving the benefits, seeing if he'll throw out an offer. If not, he says, no, I, you know, you called me, whatever else. Then you transition. Okay, well, just, just to let you know, typically um, I can get you your money for the property in two weeks to 30 days. Does that work for you? Right. So now you got the condition. Now you got the timeline. Now the motivation is going to pop out if there is motivation. So we want to go. You can pepper in, you know, see if you can get an offer out of him. See if you're, you know, he's talking now, you know, give him all the benefits. See if he'll throw out anything. If not, OK, I totally understand. I did call you. But just to let you know, we, we typically close. We can get you your money in 14 to 30 days. Is that going to work if we can close in 30 days? And then, oh, no, 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 or yeah, that'd be great, right? Here we go. Seems like you did uh, do some renovations in the kitchen. Um, have you guys did any any major remodeling in the home other other than the... You're just repeating, Ray. You're repeating because you're, you're writing stuff down. You probably had, you know, 35 to 75 people hang up on you, tell you no, tell you you're the 15th caller. You're like, oh my gosh, I've got somebody that's talking to me right now. So we have to go into every conversation. It's just like a Bill Belichick thing with the Patriots, right? Just do your job this play. Every call, anytime somebody picks up, you got to be prepared for them to say yes. And the problem is we have so many things telling us that they're saying no, 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 no. Who are you? Do you see a sign in the yard? You know, whatever. All these things. And it's kind of like pulling us back and we're kind of like shelled up because we want to kind of protect ourselves. But if you just are open to each conversation, understand some people are going to need our help right now. Some people don't. And listen, we're interrupting their day. They have the right to respond to us however they want to respond to us. But we have the right to protect ourselves, to protect our own brain, and to just have an incredible amount of optimism and just assume everybody's going to say yes to us, right? Be prepared for that yes. Just focus on that call at a time. One call at a time. See you guys did any renovation there? No. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um, what is the ballpark number you're looking to get for? I mean, most of uh, at least you I right at him. You didn't you didn't warm it up. Get that timeline. I need to know his motivation, condition, timeline. The motivation comes, then you can start working price. But you just went from tell me about your house, tell me about your house. How much do you want? You know what I mean? Like that's where and you're gonna see this is where it ends. This is where it falls off here. Go ahead. Um, no, okay. it's uh, dropping dropping that uh, the price point. A lot of times, think think of a conversation as stages, right? We have to go through a period of discovery. There's mm -hmm. a discovery period, and that means that you're just finding out information. You're nowhere near ready to drop, you know, that low anchor yet because you don't have that connection built. Yep. The guy's interested. Yeah, you had. I mean, you got to capitalize on that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Yep. So yeah. love it. You called, you, you called me. Houses are selling in my neighborhood for over three hundred thousand. If I got to move. Um, I'm going to have to spend more than that. So if it's worth it, if your offer is worth it for me to move, we'll consider it. If not, 
you know, I'm not interested in selling my house. You called me to make me an offer I can't refuse, and now the ball's in your court. You call me back when you have an offer. Thanks. Yeah, Aaron, and uh, hello? Boom. Boom. Ray, listen, I, I, I loved everything. I, I loved your approach to it. I loved your energy to it. I know that you've done this. Uh, you were doing a good job actively listening. You were repeating and responding some of the things that he was saying. So, I mean, bro, you're like 92% there. Clean up that 8%. Listen, I am telling you, thousands of I not only have I talked to tens of thousands of sellers, all right, personally, but I've listened to so many of these recordings and I can tell you, if you follow the steps, if you follow the script that is in TTP Insider, the TTP script, you are gonna be more effective. Condition, timeline, motivation, price. Condition, timeline, motivation, price. I am telling you, that is gonna, that's gonna give you that extra 8% rate and you are gonna be absolutely unstoppable. Now listen, this, per this person probably won't sell at a discount from what I'm, from just my, my, my gut feeling, but just having a better conversation there, maybe digging a little deeper, or if, you know, he's really, really standoffish going to that next level of, do you have any other properties that you would consider an offer on maybe something that needs some love right yeah yeah no absolutely think think about a call all right here's the thing about cold calling right we're reaching out for, uh, for people it's almost like getting fish on the hook mm -hmm. and and uh, i just went through a, through a really cool experience last week that's why this is fresh in my head <laughs> first time Wait i ever pop that first time i quick. ever went fishing yep um <laughs> Look at this guy. His name's Raphael, but I'm going to call him Shredder. I, I was told that is the biggest fish in the world, and I, and I believe it. Like, nobody's ever caught anything bigger than that. Yeah, and, that's and, it. And it's, it's true. It's, yeah. it's hashtag facts. Yep. Um, so, <laughs> but here's what I learned from that, right? Same thing as, as when we're talking to a seller, to a fresh new seller. Um, you get them on the hook. And if you reel it in too fast, the line's going to break, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's why you get, you know, cut off. Uh, but if you, I, I took 10 minutes bringing that thing in, yeah. like just reeling it in a little by little and then letting go and then bring, bringing it back in and then doing the thing. I was being coached by the, by the captain of the boat. He was like, do this, do this, do this. And I was following his lead. Yeah. So I was doing that, but it took me about 10 minutes to get that thing on the boat. Um, and the line didn't break, right? It's the same thing with cold calling. Uh, if we get somebody on the hook, for example, we saw Ray had interest with this seller, right? We get somebody on the hook, take the time to have that conversation. You yeah. already went through a, a thousand, you know, calls and no answers and disconnects and wrong numbers and all kinds of stuff. When you have somebody on the hook, give it its uh, respect, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Give it its due time and take the, actually the time to come in and then discover and then go through that whole process. So it's Love all right it. to take, you know, 20 minutes on the phone with somebody who's already in the hook. Yeah. I love I love that you tied that picture into that whole thing. I mean, but it's a, it's absolute truth. I mean, it really is. Take your time with it. You know what I mean? Really get build that rapport, build that relationship. Really listen to them. Really get them to um, to open up. And and if you follow the path, I, I listen. I'm not just saying this just because I want to be the guy that like comes up with how to pre qual sell. So it works. That's it. That's all I'm telling you. Like condition timeline motivation comes out of that price if you have to ask them why they want to sell point blank you're not doing your job right you haven't pre-qualified the condition and the timeline all right so throw the timeline in there don't be scared to say you know what i close in two weeks to 30 days does that work one it makes it, it makes this serious it doesn't make this just seem like oh well maybe this is just something that might happen this is i'm looking for somebody serious are you serious and they're going to tell you right away what their motivation and if they're ready to go. If they tell you what you're li listening for is, oh, well, uh, listen, I, I wanted to sell this thing yesterday. I'm ready to go now. You get me this number and we are selling. We're going. That's what you're looking for. I'm, I'm telling you it happens every single day. Got a text message from my disposition manager today. Uh, just closed, just sold a deal for 70000 One conversation. We've got another one in North Scottsdale, Raphael. That that want a ridiculous price from a call that we had two years ago and we're we kept following up following up following up building the relationship and now they're finally ready to go so i'm just telling you you when you have these conversations if you're out there hunting for opportunities building up a golden pipeline the golden pipeline of opportunities and you fill that thing up it starts bursting and all of a sudden you're getting deals every single week. Some people get them every single day. It just depends on how big their team is and, and what market they're in. But this business is absolutely bananas. It's absolutely incredible. So.
If you like that video, hit that subscribe button. We come out with new videos every single day. And if you want your questions answered, like you and I, one-on-one, -on -one, make sure that you join us for the live show every single Wednesday. I will see you there.